I've been meaning to get out here for a while. There's a lot of bush back here, so my plan is to set up a basically a, a bush camp, a bug out camp. Just some place that I can go hang out, you know, get away from things, practice bushcraft. I've got a few different spots in mind. You know, I'm looking for the ideal spot. I've scouted it out a little bit, and uh, there's one area that I like a fair amount. But then when I was looking at topographical maps, I saw what appears to be a clearing. I'm gonna go check that out as well. I don't know if it's a wet area, you know, or if it's just, you know, maybe trees came down. So I'm gonna go check that out, see what that's like. And if that doesn't work out, I'll head out to the area that I scouted before. All right, well, I found what I thought was a, well, it is a semi-clearing, but what it actually is is a wetland swampy area, so this isn't going to do at all. So I'm going to head over to where I've scouted out in the past and see how that looks. Okay, so this is what I like about the area. I've got this really nice stream that flows through and you know to look at the water, the water is nice and clear. Of course, I'm still going to need to either filter or boil it before I drink it, but you know, it's a huge bonus for setting up a camp.
All right, well, this is the spot. We've got lots of sunlight shining in. We've got a stand of cedars that is going to block any wind coming from the south. I've got the creek running behind me, and also it winds around, and it's on that side. But I'm up nice and high, probably 20 feet above the creek, so the ground is nice and dry. Plenty of wood resources. I got cherry trees, maple, ash, some poplar, plus the cedars, some ironwood in here. So yeah, this is the spot. I'm gonna get setting up camp. Okay, so to create the A-frame tarp shelter between two trees, I'm gonna need a few knots. Now, they're the three knots that I consider the most important knots for bushcraft or wilderness skills. The first one is the bowlin, and there's a couple ways I can use the bowlin to anchor my ridge line between the two trees. The first way is a running bowlin, and then the second way is a bowlin using a toggle. Okay, so I'm gonna show you both. Okay, to start off, I'm just going to uncoil my paracord here. All right, now I've already got a bowl in established at the end here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to tie it quickly. I'd remind you, simple not to do. All you need to do is take your running line, place it in your left hand, all right, if you're right-handed, okay? Form a small loop, then take your working end, run it up through the bottom of the loop, around the back of the paracord, and then back down through the loop that you created. Okay, then pinch your working end and your other piece and just pull it tight, and you've got this loop. Bullen makes a fixed loop at the end of a line. Okay, so from there I'm going to take my bullen, I'm going to pass it around the tree, bring it back up. Now I'm going to take a bite, okay, a bite's just a bend in a line. I'm going to push the bite through my bowline, and I'm going to just use a stick, okay. I'm going to put a stick up through that bite, I'm going to pull it tight, and now I'm using that stick as a toggle, all right. And if I need to, I can just work it back and then pull it over, so now I've got a tight line there, okay, and I can work my ridge line across to the next tree. Okay, so I'll show you the next option. So once again, we're gonna start with our ridge line just as a working line, no knot tied into it. And I'm gonna pass it around behind the tree and then back up to me. I'm gonna have the running line in my left hand and actually I'm just gonna loop it over my wrist so that I can use my left hand freely. Then I'm gonna tie my bowl and I'm gonna make a little loop. Then I'm gonna pass my working end behind my running line and then finish off my bowl and come up through my loop around the back and then back down and pull it tight and now I've got basically a bowl and noose and I can pull that tight so to finish off my ridge line what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a trucker's hitch now I've run my ridge line over to my next tree and looped it around now the next thing I'm going to do is just create a, a bite in my running line and turn it into a loop here. Okay, so then I'm going to just feed my line through. I'm going to pull it tight. And I'm just going to pinch it. And I'm going to finish it off with just a slip loop right here. And then I'll just tidy up this end of the rope.
Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is I'm just temporarily staking down the corners with just some sticks through the grommet holes in the tarp. After that, I'm going to use a top line and just tie everything off. Okay, so the next step is just to get these corners secured better now. So I'm going to do a bowline and just loop it through the corner grommets here. Okay, so I've got my, my little bowl in here, and all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to feed up my paracord through my grommet. Now these are just such small lengths, I'm not going to bother with a, a running bowl in this time. I could, it makes no difference, but this is good enough. All right, okay, so I've got the bowl in, I've looped it through the grommet here, and now I'm just going to go down and secure it really low on this nearby tree with a taut line. Now, I'm lucky that I've got a tree over here, and I don't in the other spot, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make up some uh, pegs. I'm just going to whittle up some pegs with a notch, and I'll use that as a makeshift tent peg, and do the same thing, and use a taut line at each corner. Then I'll just judge with the wind. I might taut line off at a few other center spots on the tarp and then I'm going to secure up here around the main tree as well. That'll just make it so it doesn't rattle around and if it gets a little bit breezy tonight it should be fine. Okay so for the top line I'm just going to pass my paracord around the back of this tree and then I'm going to cross the the main line here. I'm going to go inside my loop and then I'm gonna wrap again, but I'm gonna do it on the inside of my first loop. Okay, I'm gonna pull it tight. I'm gonna go to the outside and then pass back through. Okay, so that's my taut line hitch. Now the taut line, I can slide it up and down so I can loosen it up or I can pull it tight. Okay, now if I want to make sure that this doesn't slip at all, I can just do add in like a slip knot at the end here, just some kind of stopper knot so that it doesn't pass through.
So there you have it. Simple A-frame tarp shelter that's going to work as a base camp for me while I set up something more permanent out here. Alright, now I better get going on the fire pit. I'm going to have to clear the ground of all the debris, any leaves or sticks, anything that is combustible. I'm going to have to dig down, make it a proper fire pit. What I need to be careful of is that I don't want the roots under the ground to catch fire. In an area like this, that would be an absolute nightmare. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just marking out where the fire pit's actually going to go and that way I have a good idea of uh, circumference around that. Really I want the fire pit to be about 10 feet away from any trees or my shelter, you know, anything that could light up. So this looks pretty good. My shelter here is going to be where my temporary shelter is right now and right now this is about midway which is I think pretty good. Looks like I'm far enough from the other trees not to worry about them. So yeah, time to start digging. You know, really these tri-fold shovels, they're not really good at all. They keep loosening up, you know, and wobbly, so uh, it feels like it's going to break at any time. You know, in fact, this is probably the third or fourth of these that I've owned in my life, and they do break. Um, you know, my option would be to take, uh, find a stick, you know, about, I don't know, as thick as my wrist or, you know, a bit thicker, and take off half the diameter of the stick at the end so I've got a, a flat edge and use a stick out here um, I'd much rather have something like this there's other types of trench shovels out there you know army surplus that type of thing but uh, for the amount that I'll use this it's a uh, it's worth the investment you know one bush camp that's a uh, you know if I can get that out of it this is probably a ten dollar investment I'll say the one good thing about these is that it's got kind of a serrated edge on the one side. And now, it might be silly to say, but this edge is actually really good for breaking through the smaller roots. So, so yeah, so that was, uh, you know, could I dig a hole with a stick? Yeah, I could. Or I could spend $10 and have a little tri-fold saw that, you know, hopefully it'll last past this build and uh, you know something I can keep in my pack for other trips All right, well, I thought the trifold shovel was a good idea. I thought it would last more than one hole, that is. It's actually probably the third or fourth one of these shovels that I've owned. Um, yeah, this is what happens. They break. So anyhow, stick shovel it is.
All right, so when I hiked in here, I remembered seeing there was some um, old garbage, metal. So I went back to have a look to see if there'd be anything suitable for the fire pit. And I found this old, this old steel wheel well. So I'm gonna throw that in there. I had thought about, you know, lining it with stone, but uh, you know, the more I thought about it, the only stone that would fit is in the creek and uh, if I throw those in, likely they'll explode on me, so I don't want that. So I hiked over and, yeah, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. So throw that in here. There. Well, I was just walking away from camp to look for some stones that I could put along the back of the fire pit. And I noticed something that I hadn't seen before. I guess I just wasn't looking. But uh, there's a, a game trail that goes through here, right right past camp. I'm not sure if you can see it, but just to the, to the right of me here, you can see the patch. It's a trail. And then there's some deer prints in it. Pretty cool. Here's an example of a deer print right here. So these are white-tailed deer in the area. So you can just press down the leaves into the print. Here it is right here. And then there's more obviously up the trail. I did find some rocks, so I'm going to start arranging them because it's probably going to be more time consuming for me to arrange the rocks than it will be to find them. And I have enough to get started. Basically, I'm going to lay out the larger rocks on this side and then have the shorter rocks towards the front. Well, temporary shelter is up, fire pit's dug. Tomorrow I'll get started building a permanent shelter out here.